The Atari ST was the first of the new generation of 16-bit home computers to hit the market in 1985, bringing a high-powered 68000 processor with 512 kilobytes of RAM into a world full of 48KZX spectrums was a total game changer. So let's turn your PC into an ST and play some Atari games. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Atari ST was launched in the spring of 1985, just ahead of the Commodore Amiga. It was one of the first of the new generation of high-powered home computers to hit the market when it was still dominated by the classic 8-bit computers such as the ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64. Powered by the Motorola 68000 processor, as were a lot of these computers, with 512 kilobytes of RAM, the 520ST was actually the first computer to feature a full-colour Windows icons, menus, pointers or, or WIMP operating system. And this was the GEM desktop from Digital Research, which was the original competitor to Windows. WIMP OS's had been pioneered by the monochrome Apple Macintosh, but pretty much every computer following the Atari ST came with a full-colour GUI instead of the traditional console-based interfaces. And this also includes PCs, which, shot, which saw version 1 of Windows being released late in 1985. With the processing power of the 68000 and up to 1 megabytes of RAM in some of the slightly later versions, teamed with a relatively low selling price, this should have set the system up for success. Indeed, the Atari ST was very well received by the press and public, but at home the Commodore Amiga very quickly became the must-have machine and in the office the Apple Mac and IBM PCs became dominant. This left the Atari ST in a poor second place all round, excelling only in a few niche markets such as the music, where its unique MIDI interface made it an essential tool for musicians. On the gaming side, the Atari had fantastic graphics and sound. Not quite as good as the Amiga, but not far off. Developers created an extensive catalogue of titles, and that's what we're going to be focusing on as we emulate the system. So we'll be using an emulator called Hatari, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to run it on your PC, turning it into your very own Atari ST. So let's get started. The Hatari emulator is an open source package that you can download from this website. Installation is very easy. Just unzip the downloaded archive and extract it into a suitable folder. I'll be loading my version into my LaunchBox installation, so I'm going to extract it into the Emulators folder inside my LaunchBox folder. And that's the emulator installed. Now to get the Atari ST to run, you need a BIOS ROM. Uh, and like the Amiga, there are a number of versions, each tailored to different machine specifications and world regions. So there's really two options here. So firstly, you can find the original Tremel operating system or, or TOS ROM images. For gaming, the UK release of TOS 1.02 is probably the most compatible. But if you need this or other versions, try the web page for the Steam, that's S-T-E-E-M Atari emulator, which can help you get hold of these. But do be aware that these ROMs are copyright software and should not be used without permission of the copyright holder. Now luckily there is a completely free and legal alternative to the manufacturer ROMs. So if you go to the MUTOS website, you can download their 512k version to set up your Atari ST. Now this software replaces the original ROMs, but also adds a number of more modern features, as well as supporting the later Atari models such as the STE, TT and the Falcon. And I'm going to be using this MUTOS in this tutorial. To install the BIOS, you just need to extract the ROM image and save it somewhere. So in the MUTOS download, you'll find there's a number of versions, um, but I'll be using the UK ROM version, and I'm just simply going to put it into the same folder as my Atari application files. 
So all we need to do now is to start the emulator. Now this does need to be run as administrator on a Windows machine. So if you right click the file in Explorer and then select run as administrator, you'll initially get a blank screen. Now it, it might prompt you about your TOS version, um, but just accept any dialogues and wait. Um, and it will take about a minute for the desktop to appear. Now, now while that's booting up, you can either wait for the desktop to, to appear or, or you can just press F12 straight away as we're going to have to change a few settings and reboot anyway. So pressing F12 will bring up the Hatari control panel. So first we need to load the new TOS ROM. So click the ROM button and browse and find your MU TOS image. Select that. Then back to the main menu, make sure that the reset machine is selected and then click OK. The emulator will reboot. It should show you that MUTOS is installed and eventually then it will drop you back into the GEM desktop. So if you've managed to get this far, everything is working fine. We can now adjust a few settings on the emulator. So the way that this works, then at any time when you're in the emulator, pressing F12 will pause emulation and bring up this Hatari main menu screen. So click on the system option and that lets you set the model that you want to emulate. The CPU lets you change the processor type, its speed and then various settings. The memory screen, of course, lets you set the system RAM. So I'm just going to leave mine at the default settings of an Atari ST with a 68000 processor and 4 megabytes of RAM. We also need to look at the joystick options. So here you can tell the emulator which game controllers you're going to use. Now do note that the ST Joystick 1 is the actual joystick port for the main player 1. Um, ST Joystick 0 tended to be used by the mouse. Now here you can either define some keys for the directions or just simply select a USB controller that you've already got plugged in. So finally, from the Atari settings, we need to go to screen settings and these are the Atari screen settings. So here I'm going to set my system to use full screen and I'm going to turn off the little status bar that you can see at the bottom um, so that we just get a nice clean full screen Atari. So with this set, we can go back to the main screen. We can then save our configurations so that these settings will stick for the next time we run Hatari. And then all we need to do now is to make sure we select Reset Machine and then click OK to reboot it. And once that boots up, we should now have a full screen Atari ST. And again, as I said, we, we can use F12 at any time to get to that Hatari menu, or we can toggle between full screen and windowed mode by just pressing F11. So that's the emulator all set up and running. So let's get some games. As usual, you're, you'll need to find your own games for this system. And if you haven't got hold of any, um, just use Google and you'll be able to uncover them very, very easily. Now these will usually come as floppy disk images, usually with a .st extension. If you do get hold of a zipped file, you're going to need to extract out the individual disk images to get the game to run. Now as with the Amiga setup in my previous tutorial, and if you haven't tried an Amiga yet, I, I do highly suggest you do so. Um, and again, I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description down below. But as with the Amiga, you can find hacked versions of games um, with any of the software protection removed. Now, if these are available, I'd advise using these, unless you have access to the actual manuals or security devices that came with the game itself. Now, the best way to do this is to create a game folder to hold all of your game images and then copy the disk images in there. So I'm going to put my game folder in my Launchpad ROMs folder um, so that I can use that front end a bit later on. And now we are ready to play. 
So to, to play your games in Atari, you do need to pretend that you're actually sat at a real Atari ST. Um, we need to put the discs into the machine in the order that the software asks. So quite often the games will assume you've only got one single floppy drive. So we do need to jump in and out of the Atari main menu and swap these discs in and out. So if you boot up Atari and then go to the Atari main menu with the F12 button, click on the floppy disks option. So first, we can set the default folder for our games. And this is one of the main reasons for putting them all in the same folder. So when we reboot Atari, it will automatically know that these are where our games are stored. So just click the Browse button for the default floppy images directory, Browse and select your games folder. So now when we browse for drive A, if you click that button, you'll find it goes straight into your games disks. So find the first disk of your game and select that. Now you can browse for drive B and select a second disk um, if it's required. Uh, and, and make sure that you do tick the auto insert B option. Um, but you'll find that that doesn't always work, um, but it's worth having a go anyway. We can then go back to the main menu. Now to get the game to start, we need to reboot our Atari. So make sure you check the restart radio button and then click OK to reboot it. Once that reboots, you should find that your game has now started loading. Now do be patient as the Atari software emulates the floppy drive speeds or, or, or the lack of speed. So you'll have quite long pauses while it sorts itself out. But at least this does show you how spoilt we are with the computer speed of these days. Now if the game asks for more disks, press F12 and then load it into drive A. Make sure you don't select reset, but just click OK to resume the loading. And you should now be into a game. So as I said earlier, I wanted to get this integrated into my LaunchBox application. If you're not familiar with LaunchBox, it's a fantastic front-end launcher for your whole retro gaming collection. It easily lets you browse your games across multiple emulators and launch them with a single click. It can download box art and game information from the web and even has a Big Box Brother app that turns your PC into a full screen gaming centre. Now I have made a video on how to install and set it up so please do check that out and I'll put a link in the description below. So I'm in LaunchBox at the moment and I'm going to go up to the menu and I'm going to go to Tools and Manage Emulators. So I'm going to add a new emulator, and this is going to be the Hatari. I'm then going to tell LaunchBox where that lives. And that's really it set up now to work with that. So we're going to associate some platforms with it. So I'm going to associate the Atari ST with it. And I'm going to make sure that it uses this as the default emulator. Then we're going to OK that. I now need to set up the platforms. So again, if I go up to my menu and go menu and go to manage, or sorry, tools and manage, and this time platforms. So I'm going to add a platform in, and this is going to be the Atari ST. And I'm gonna tell it that when I scrape games, I want those to be Atari ST games. And I now need to put this into the um, menu structure. So this is going to be in the computers category. So that's all set up, so close that. And now we need to go and script the game. So I've already copied the files into the correct ROMs folder. So I just need to ask LaunchBox to scan so it will pick up any new games that I've added into the system. So that will run through and scan all my folders and it should end up picking up those Atari ST games that I've added into that Atari ST folder. And there we are, and we can see them in there. I do that, and it now is loading up all the files for those.
If I double click on a game, I should then get it automatically loading that up, booting into um, our Atari emulator and firing up the game. And there we are, Xenon 2 Mega Blast running in LaunchBox. You will find some games that don't launch directly from LaunchBox or indeed through the normal Atari standalone. But um, as you're using the full version of Atari, you've always got access to the Atari main menu via the F12 key. So sometimes the game's disk you download is just corrupted in some way. So swapping for a different version will bring the game back to life. Sometimes you need to change the specification on your Atari ST model that you're emulating to meet the game specifications. But just use a bit of trial and error and you should get most games running okay. So that's the Atari ST all up and running on your PC and connected into your LaunchBox setup if you've got one. So all you need to do now is to have fun exploring all of those fantastic games. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and, and please do like and subscribe to my channel to get access to all of my gaming, making and coding videos. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.